Hello everyone and welcome, I'm Alex, the architect for back 4 app and in today's video we'll continue our Flutter and Parse series of videos and today we'll be exploring advanced queries using constraints. So today we won't be looking much into the simulator or the Parse application, but mostly in, in code. So let me go back to my Visual Studio here and here we will find our query, query to do, which queries the to do class and I didn't specify any constraints for it, which means Parse will retrieve all the records inside that class. Uh, this is not usually the situation that you're looking for. Most of the times you'll be looking for a specific set of results inside a class, and that's what where uh, constraints get useful. Uh, constraints are uh, broken into a few categories, so basic constraints, geopoint constraints, relational constraints, other constraints and sorting constraints. Uh, today we'll be looking uh, into a few ones of those. So let's imagine inside my to-do class, I want to retrieve only the records where done is equal to false. All I have to do is put here dot dot equals, pass my property name, uh, so done, and then comma, and false. So this will make parse query the to-do class, retrieve only the uh, done properties equals false and return, return only this result set to me. And you can append constraints as much as you want until you get to the result set that you wish. So in this case, let's suppose you have a property and you want to check if it contains a, a value. All you have to do is dot dot contains, put the property name, in this case I'm going to put some text, uh, a property name text, and then pass on a string, so let's say uh, home. It will look for all the to-do objects which has the done property equals false and contains the text uh, property home. You can also get uh, the less than uh, and less than or equal to. Those uh, will look for a number value smaller than or smaller than or equal to uh, the number passed on, on the query. So for instance, if I put less than age, which is my property 10, it will retrieve all the ages, which is lower than 10, but not equal to 10. If I want to include 10 uh, as the value, I have to put less than or equal to. So it will retrieve all numbers smaller than 10 and include the 10. You can also get uh, greater than or greater than or equal to. This is very useful if you need to set a, a, a between uh, space uh, among your records. So let's say you want smaller than, than 10, including 10, so less than uh, or equal to, but you want uh, greater than uh, 2, so dot dot, greater than age, oops, 2. So this will get all the results from 3 to 10. Why 3? Because I'm using greater than. If you want to include 2, greater than, or equal to, and in this case, it will retrieve from 2 to 10. You can also want to uh, dismiss uh, the, a, a specific value. Let's say you want everything from 2 to 10, excluding 5. In this case, dot dot, not equal to age and 5. It will bring 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, it will dismiss the 5. If you're working with strings, you can put also starts with, let's call it uh, text, and starts with uh, my name. So for all the, string, the strings inside the text property that starts with my name, it will uh, be retrieved by this query. All the ones that do not match uh, this uh, constraint or any other constraint that I put will not be retrieved. So I can also put ends with 
and text, which is my property, and finish with, let's say, a uh, dot. So all the text with, which starts with my name and ends with a point will be retrieved. If it starts with my name and finishes with any other character, it will be dismissed. Also, if it ends with a point, but it starts with any string which is not my name, uh, it will be also dismissed. And finally, exists. You can use exists to check if a property exists and if it's populated. So also text and in this case, this is all I have to pass. So it will check if the text exists and if not, this result will not be retrieved. So if we have many kinds of constraints and you can use them to compose your queries as complex as you need it to be. The, the thing here is you have to test it out until you find a combination that works for you. With time and experience, it gets very easy to do. And uh, with some experience, you will do this without consulting any kind of documentation. But for a start, you probably want to check the documentation and see how to use specifically uh, the constraints that you need to. Once you retrieve those results, you can also sort them. So let's say uh, this query with all these constraints uh, brought me some uh, objects and I want to sort it by age, for instance. All I have to do is use our order uh, sorting constraint. So dot dot order and pass age as my, my constraint. Uh, I can also tell if it is ascending or descending. And it will order my ages by uh, smaller to bigger or from bigger to smaller, depending on what I choose. So these are all the constraints that we support in Flutter. So equals, contains, less than, uh, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than, greater than or equal to, not equal to, starts with, ends with, e exists. If you're working with geo points, you can check for near, which is the proximity from a geo point, within miles, within kilometers, within radians, within geo box and within polygon. If you have uh, complex classes, let's say you have uh, pointers and relations among these classes, you can also use relational constraints, which will make two queries and match the results of the two at once. So matches query, do not match query, matches key in query, do not, does not match key in query. You can also use rejects operations to filter your results. You have to uh, create a rejects um, uh, formatted string and uh, Flutter and Parse will match these rejects, rejects uh, against your results. And finally, we have our ordering, ordering cons sorting constraints, order lim uh, which sorts from smaller to, to bigger or from bigger to smaller, limit uh, which will uh, set the result set size. So you can say, for instance, limit 10 will bring only 10 re uh, records, skip which will skip a number of records. Let's say you know, you're paginating a, a, a result set. So you want to show from one to 10 and then skip on the page two, the one to 10 and get 11 to 20. So you can skip the first 10 ones on the second page. Ascending and descending are the ways to sort uh, the, the result sets. So Hopefully this video is useful to you. Again, you have to check the documentation until you have experience enough to use this by yourself. But once you do, it's really easy to work with parse and query constraints. I hope you liked this video and hope to see you on the next one of the series soon. See you soon. Bye bye.